So it seems one of Holly's greatest and most appealing features is also its most fatal flaw. And ironically, it's not hardware or even a software issue that becomes a flaw, but essentially a choice of words that becomes a problem, which is a little bit weird. Now the words I'm referring to, as you can see right here, is Holly's decision to call their EFI systems self-tuning. In this video, we will break down if these systems are actually self-tuning, and if so, to what extent, when you should and shouldn't rely or expect the system to be self-tuning, and what you may be missing out on by relying on the self-tuning feature. At the end of the video, we'll go over my worthless opinion on if I would consider this system to be self-tuning or not. If you have watched any of my other videos, you are probably well aware that I make a living and feed my family by tuning cars. So if you were to ask me, is Holly EFI self-tuning, it would be very easy to just simply say, absolutely not, and flip the table over and smash the camera. So as tempting as it is to do all of that, uh, first we will take a look in the software and see what the self-tuning will actually self-tune and then look at all of the things that it does not self-tune. So taking a look here in the software, this is actually one of the last cars that came to me that drove here on a self-learn slash wizard tune. So this is a pretty fair example to look at as far as a real world example. So first thing you will notice is that all of these cells over here are white. That would mean that this car is out of fuel injector at this point. And considering this is just a basically stock, naturally aspirated 5.3 LS engine, that is problem number one. If we look over here, we can see that this tune is actually scaled up to 21 pounds of boost even though it is naturally aspirated. So this was a perfect example of the wrong map sensor being selected. So as you would imagine, this car ran pretty bad. And another thing to keep in mind here, and part of the reason why I don't like using anything forced induction with the self-tuning stuff is this is scaled to where this much of the tune is in vacuum and essentially naturally aspirated. And we only have this much resolution for the forced induction application side of it. Essentially, all of this is all that we have that's in boost. Uh, that is not how I would set something like this up. But anyways, this is the main fuel table. If we go to the fuel graph, this is what the wizard spit out for him, which looks relatively presentable. And this here is the learn table. This is what the self-tuning is capable of making changes to. And you can see here that this thing is trying to pull out 40% of fuel, uh, essentially where this thing is idling and lightly cruising and progressively goes a little bit lower, but that's ultimately because it's trying to, it kind of like where you're driving here and it makes your 40% change, it will progressively kind of go out and shrink those values to try to essentially make somewhat of a presentable fuel table. But if you watch what happens here, again, look at the fuel graph. If we go to the learn table, when we transfer the learn to the base, now this is the self-tuning, keep in mind. Let's smooth it just because it's pretty rough looking already. Now when we go back to the fuel graph, I'm not sure how familiar you are with how an engine runs or how a tune should look, but this is not how an engine runs. If you think of the way that this graph looks, it should be a pretty good visual representation of essentially the engine's output, the horsepower, the torque, however you want to look at that. And uh, again, this is just not how an engine runs. So if we exclude the inputs, the outputs, the nitrous control, the boost control, all of the more, let's call it advanced stuff and think of this just as we want the engine to start and run and drive. Uh, let's go through what this self-tuning does not control. So starting here in the fuel tab, uh, one, it would not have picked up that the wrong map sensor was selected. It would not have picked up that this is a turbocharged file, but essentially on a naturally aspirated engine. Our fuel table is now pretty much wrecked. Our fuel graph is horribly wrecked. The learn table zeroes itself out after you transfer it. So essentially you would drive and repopulate this and transfer it and redrive and populate it and transfer it. And that's how the learn works, which is essentially our 
long-term fuel trim. So with the target air fuel ratio, this is something that the tuner or car owner needs to essentially test and figure out what works best for their particular application, what's gonna make the most power, what's gonna drive the best, get the best fuel economy, and also keep the engine safe. But this is going to be extremely different for every car. So again, the wizard will set you up with some values to put in here as a starting point, and the learn slash self-tuning will not make changes to this. So I would put this into the, it is not self-tuning category. Past that, we have all of these different acceleration enrichment tables. None of these will be tuned with the self-tuning. Same with the temperature enrichment. And this is a big problem on a lot of cars. By default, they put a ton of coolant temp enrichment into these things because the vehicles will start with too much fuel, but they will not start with not enough fuel. So it's one of those things that airing on the side of too much fuel will at least get you up and running. Uh, then we have coolant-based temperature offsets, air temperature enrichment. Then we have our startup enrichment that is also not adjusted uh, after start hold after start enrichment, our decay rate, decel fuel cutoff. Uh, we can populate all of these sensors within the initial setup with the wizard. And most of these are configurable within the initial setup in the wizard. And there's some basic inputs and outputs. Uh, ultimately, as you can see, this software has a lot of stuff going on. So if you're just trying to use just that little three and a half inch touchscreen display, you're really giving up a lot of what the system has to offer. And if all of this looks like Chinese to you, but you'd like to learn how to actually use this stuff, um, I do have a course I'll link in the description below. Uh, we'll probably hit 100 videos within that course explaining what all of this stuff does within the next week or two. Uh, here is the closed loop and learn limits. Uh, you can see here by default, we are allowing the computer to plus or minus 50% of fuel twice. So if you have an oxygen sensor fail, this is going to get you into a bunch of trouble in a hurry. We also have individual cylinder corrections that the self-tuning obviously doesn't have the ability to make adjustments to. Next, if we jump into the idle tab, during the setup process, you can choose an idle speed, but all of these other settings are basically you're gonna to want to tune these. Uh, the system is not gonna make any adjustments for you. And we have our IAC parked position. This one's a little bit confusing to a lot of people uh, because the idle control valve can only move a certain amount of air. So once you are at 100% of IAC park position, if it's still not enough airflow to make the car start without you having to give it any throttle, then the, the system can't do any more. So the valve does not flow an unlimited amount of air. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to do this on a really large engine with a really large cam, the, the valve itself just might not flow enough air for it to do what you want it to do. And next, and one of the more most important things is if we go into the spark tab, when we use the wizard to set up a tune for us, you can see it only uses three values. We have an idle value, a cruise value, and a wide open throttle value. So none of the ignition stuff is tuned by the self-tuning or the learning. And if you just spent the money for an EFI system, I would highly encourage you go to a 2D table and actually take advantage of tuning all of this. And just to click through some of this other stuff that is not adjusted by the self-tuning, there's our fuel graph, or here's our timing graph, the same as the fuel graph, just a visual representation of the table. We have our cranking parameters, rev limiters, launch retard, or not control, coolant temp offsets, air temp offsets, etc. So you can see there's a whole lot going on here. And out of all of the stuff that I clicked on, we didn't click on a lot of it because it's more advanced, like I said, but ultimately this learn table right here is the only table that is actually self updating, self tuning. Uh, some of the other stuff we can set up during the wizard process, but this is the only table that when you're driving it around, allowing it to make corrections, that is actually going to be able to make corrections. So as you can see, this is a couple of percent of what the whole system has to offer. So my assumption is after that little software walkthrough, you probably noticed that the self-tuning only pertains to the learn table, which you can transfer to the main fuel table and potentially destroy it. And the wizard can help generate a base map. 
You're probably also starting to decide which team you're on, whether you think Holly is or is not self-tuning. So regardless of what your thoughts are, I will say that the self-generating base maps plus the closed loop control plus the learn table is actually extremely helpful for most beginners and tuners. Saying it's helpful for beginners probably makes sense, but saying it's helpful for tuners probably sounds weird. Let me explain. Without a doubt, the hardest part of tuning cars is dealing with cars that come in for tuning that are not ready for tuning. Now the wizard and self-tuning does not eliminate this, but typically, most people are able to get their cars to the point where it will start, idle, maybe drive, and typically be able to drive it onto a trailer, which actually helps eliminate a potential 3,000 problems that tend to pop up when a car comes in for tuning that has never actually started and ran before. Now that situation has gotten so bad, I've personally had to quit providing base maps for cars that I didn't work on, and I don't work on cars anymore, because nine times out of 10, you send a base map and then you get hit with a, it won't start, your tune sucks, and suddenly it becomes a tuner's issue to diagnose whatever installation mistakes you might have made. The good news is that Holly has made it very easy for the end user to be able to generate a base map that will start the car that will help eliminate the whole situation altogether. Now this whole self-tuning thing works better in some situations than in others, so here are some things to keep in mind. Now the more modified the car is, the worse that this self-tuning is going to work. Plain and simple. God damn it! Calm down. No! Consequently, if the engine is minimally modified, then it's going to work much better. One of the biggest deciding factors of how well this works is how aggressive the camshaft is. Really aggressive cams can be one of the things that makes traditional tuning harder than usual. So you can't really expect the self-tuning to do a good job in those situations, especially since in these scenarios, nine times out of 10, you're typically ignoring what the O2 sensor says altogether. And that is really all that the self-tuning has to go off of. And speaking of O2 sensors, if your exhaust system is really short or has a bunch of leaks or whatever other problems that you may have within the exhaust system, it is going to throw off all of your O2 sensor readings, which is going to make the self-tuning not able to do what it is trying to do. God damn it. Um, I'm losing my patience. God. You Another thing to keep in mind is if you decide to use the wizard and the self-tune in a forced induction application, then you have much bigger balls than me. And I absolutely do not recommend using this in forced induction, high horsepower, or any real type of, let's call it performance oriented scenarios. Another thing to keep in mind is that the self-tuning has zero ability to troubleshoot. Uh, this one happens a lot. I see people think that they are buying like, let's say a three bar map sensor, but it turns out they were either sent or actually bought a two and a half bar sensor and the car runs like garbage because it's set up for the three bar, but actually has a two and a half bar. Without fail, the first thing that they do is blame it on the system and say that Holly sucks. Well, no, you sucks. If you put the wrong info into the system, it's going to shoot out the wrong information every single time and it has no way of knowing that you have actually input something wrong. This one's so common, I've actually made a video specifically on this topic, but relying on high closed loop and learning limits will absolutely leave you stranded on the side of the road when you have an oxygen sensor fail, which is extremely common. It's okay to leave your limits high when you're first getting started, but make sure you tighten up those limits once you get it up and running and the tuning is relatively close. I think the defaults are 50 on the closed loop and 50 on the learn, which means you are allowing the computer to plus or minus 100% of fuel. If the sensor goes bad and it fails all the way lean, then it is going to add 100% of fuel and it's going to be a situation. Now with all that being said, the learn table works great for cleaning up the fuel table day to day or season to season. But keep in mind that the learn table will never be actually zero. Uh, that's why OEM ECUs, even in 2023, still have closed loop and long-term fuel trims. And even in those 100% unmodified, monitored by the EPA scenarios, you'll never see the short-term or long-term fuel trims be zero as everything is constantly moving. Uh, essentially, there's a moving target. And that is why the short-term and long-term fuel trims are there. 
So if you think it's going to be zero, it's not. You're constantly gonna see those numbers moving around. So if it's not zero, don't freak out. So to wrap all of this up, do I personally think that Holly EFI is self-tuning? I'm gonna answer this as politically correct as I can. I do think that Holly has the ability to populate a histogram and apply a long-term fuel trim to help aid in tuning the primary fuel table. But I honestly think trying to sell it as self-tuning can be misleading, especially for those who are unfamiliar with how EFI works. Even systems that are far more complex than Holly with price tags north of $50,000 by the time they're wired up and everything else, are still not self-tuning. So to expect really kind of any ECU to be truly self-tuning is just unrealistic. If true self-tuning was an option, every ECU would be focusing all of their resources on that and only that, and all of us like myself that tune for a living would just be out of work, just like how all of this new artificial intelligence is going to wreak havoc on a lot of people's careers. Uh, maybe I'm being selfish here, but luckily ECUs are not at that point quite yet anyways. With that being said, I do think that Holly offers a great resource for those who are trying to get their cars up and running and self-tuned enough to verify that there's no leaks and such and that the vehicle is actually ready for tuning. Now, even if the car is running great with the wizard closed loop and learn, you're still not tuning essentially like 95% of the other tables that are available to you and ultimately taking advantage of a small portion of what you paid for. I do think there needs to be some clarification on the marketing side of things as far as what your expectations should be when it comes to this self-tuning. If you have a small block Chevy with a set of headers on it and an exhaust, sure, it probably works pretty good for that. If you're trying to run it on your 700 inch 16 to one compression big block with the world's most aggressive cam and 13 stages of nitrous, I wouldn't even consider thinking about trying to use the self-tuning feature. Okay, I think that's enough information for you guys to be able to make your own decision and decide if you want or need to have your vehicle tuned or if maybe uh, you want to learn how to do it yourself. Uh, it's Sunday, I'm gonna go tune this turbocharged C10, basically only here because this is the only time I can get things done without being interrupted. And ironically, the C10 used the self-tuning capabilities just enough to drive the car to the dyno for tuning, which in my opinion is exactly what the self-tuning functionality was or should be designed to do. Hopefully this will help some of you guys out so you know what to expect with the self-tuning, what not to expect. As always, I appreciate you guys that watch these videos and I will see you next time.